How you doing everybody? Listen, I hope you're all well. It's Friday, it's the 22nd of June 2012 and it's around midday. And I want to talk to you about uh, something that just came up, came up out of the, came up out of, out of nothing. Uh, I meet a man, I meet him up on the road. I, I live uh, about 17, 18 miles from Dublin, city centre. And uh, I walk on all the time and when I'm out walking, I see a man and uh, he's a banger. And when I say he's a banger, that's a misnomer really. He works for a bank, he's an employee of a bank. He's a teller. I, I, I know where he works, he doesn't know that I know where he works, but I know where he works. In Dublin. He works in an ordinary bank in Dublin, he's a teller. But he's been at it all his life, he's, I think he's 54, 55 he told me. And uh, he's a very outspoken fella. I'd say he'd be fairly left wing now. And uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, He's not an assistant manager, he's not doing management. He's one of these fellas, he says, but he's very outspoken and he's got a real Dublin accent and he's very down to earth. And I, 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 about a month, I think it was about a month or three weeks ago, I was asking him, have you ever have you found out anything about Anglo Irish or whatever? If you've anything interesting to tell me, I'd be most appreciative because he, he's seen me here on this YouTube channel, you know, he always laughs some of, the, some of the stuff I come off with. All right, he said, I'll see what I can find out for you. And sure enough, about uh, was it last it was about a week ago, the last Thursday or Friday, he told me the following. I've been away for a couple of days. That's why I haven't made any done anything. Give me an opportunity to think about it as well. But he told me about uh, Anglo Irish, about the Austrian bank, and uh, I didn't want to tell him. I already knew about that, but it was interesting. He told me that it had three and a half, four thousand accounts, and. It were, they were all numbered accounts and even the Austrian state legally didn't have the apparatus, the legal apparatus, where bad could find out who owned the accounts. And I think he said it was 1.3 or 1.4 billion euros was in the bank. Now they sold it, Anglo Irish sold this bank in uh, 2008. I think they were forced to sell it. Uh, I don't know what was going on, but anyway, so that's that. All right. But the second thing he told me, so that relates to the black book. Remember I told you about Shawnee Fitzpatrick? He has a black book. He has, in one pocket on his left hand side, he has a black book and it contains all of the names of the people that had those numbered accounts. All the Irish people and English people probably and everybody who had accounts in that bank. And they'd be all seriously good in the media who've laundered their money and stuff it offshore in Austria. And, uh, Nothing's going to happen to them, and nothing's going to happen to Mr. Mr. Drum, or sorry, Mr. Fitzpatrick. But anyway, but the second thing that he told me was fascinating. He said to me, "Did you ever hear about the grey market in the Anglo Irish shares and in the Allied Irish shares?" And I said, to him, "No." But that's very interesting stuff. Tell me more. So what he told me was fascinating. Fitzpatrick and uh, his fellow directors came up with a master stroke. They were running this bank and the bank was extremely successful because they were buying everybody off. They were buying the bank auditors off. They were buying everybody. Everybody was bought off. If there was any downside in any of the accounts, they were borrowing money from their friends in permanent TSB or Irish permanent at the time, and that was propping it up for say a month, and then they were giving the money back. Probably the bank may have been it may have been technically insolvent, but it didn't matter. The books read fantastic when they were audited, and everybody was on the make, and everybody was on the make for the following reason. I couldn't work it out. I couldn't. Took. I said, "How can? Where did they get the money to pay? Do I have to steal the money out of the accounts?" No, they didn't do that at all. This is what it did. This is what it did. <clears throat> what they did was they come up with a, ma a master scheme. I'm sure it's been done with other banks, but this is their scheme, and uh, incredible. It was like a money printing operation, and the way they did it was they issued share options. To their directors and anybody else who was part of the scheme, you had to be in. You had to be in the inner sanctum of what was going on. And once you were part of the inner sanctum, you were part of this Ponzi scheme. And this is what happened: they issued you 
share options. Okay, so the share options are made out of JB8, okay, and I have them, and I'm part of the whole, I'm a director of Anglo-Irish, and this is what I do. <coughs> they know all the people that are in Anglo-Irish Bank that have money, that have real money, and they ring them up and they make a proposition to them, okay, so they ring them up, like, like a cold sell job, all right, now, they don't even have to worry about people that just have cash. They can get people who have serious fixed assets, who've got, say, loans out of Anglo-Irish and have used this fixed asset as a security for the loan. So they have two options, the people who are liquid and people who have fixed assets. And they just go down and approach them. And this is what they say to them. Okay. Listen, how would you like to make yourself some serious money? Serious money. I have 100,000 shares in my name, JB Yates. Okay. What I'm going to do is, I need the money today. Now, our shares are trading at, say, 10 euros today. I'm going to sell these, I'm going to sell half these shares, 50,000 of these shares to you for 5 euros. Now, look, look at the following. Look at the graph of where we were 10 years ago in our bank shares and look at where we are now and look at where we're going to be in five years from now. Now you can trade these in five years from now. Okay. And if, if there was any little dips, because it was a very, very fragile market. The banking market in Dublin is very, very small and they control it that way. You see, they couldn't have people coming to the, coming to the, 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 the stock exchange and unloading shares. The people, these boys would all be greedy. They'd want to do it the next day. So no, the option was you had to keep it for five years. And the hook was, the hook on the line was that they would they would knock off 50% of the value. Now, I don't know what value they knocked off, but I'm just saying this, this is what they did. So that released 50,000 shares at five euros each. That's 250,000. And that was given over. And these people then got... A share certificate, an option, to buy these shares at a fixed price, which they, they had five years down the line, and they could trade them at whatever they were, and they, they traded, they, they had them. So what they did was, they transferred me, I transferred my name, and I put a little attachment on the front cover saying, on such and such a date, I would, whatever the, whatever the price was traded on that day, whatever, you know, the, the shares were cashed, I would make that payment over the part the, to this this particular person. Now, obviously, you'd only get say you approach ten people. It's the most greedy out of that ten is going to do that. But then what happened was, which was an extraordinary thing, the thing got out of hand because the people who they started issuing the share certificates for with the little notes attached started adding their own little notes and reselling them on the other people. So do you understand what happened? These things were issued to Anglo-Irish by Anglo-Irish. This was issued by the bank to the fellow directors of the bank. And all of a sudden, you had a market all throughout Ireland of people trading these things. So the man who bought them, say, for five euros went along to his brother who ran some sweet factory or something and sold him half of what he had or sold him the whole lot and put another note attached on except he got whatever whatever amount of money he sold them for. Say he bought them for five euros. He was able to sell them for maybe six or seven euros if he was a good salesman. So all of a sudden, all over Ireland, so I thought this was incredible. So two days ago, I happened to be at Belfast. And I rang a friend of mine who's massive contacts and all that was on in the north of Ireland. Like he has his pulse, he has his, like his finger on a pulse of what happens in, the, especially in the Catholic areas in the north of Ireland, right? Because like he lives in West Belfast, this man, and on the edge of West Belfast, and he knows everything that goes on. And I, I said, I'm going to ask him, did he ever hear this before? What do you mean I ever hear of it? He said, of course I heard of it, he says. All the fucking Fenians up here, all the Catholics in the north of Ireland, whoever had any deals on Anglo-Irish, on AIB, are fucking safe stuff with this stuff, not worth the light. 
tell me something. You go on the internet today, there's no talk of, of a grey market in Anglo Irish shares. There's no talk of a grey market in AIB shares. We know they're not worth the light. The state's taking them over, they're insolvent, gone, bang, the state now owns them. But that's how Mr. Fitzpatrick and how Mr. Drone was now living with seemingly doesn't seem to have any shortage of money. And wherever he lives in, in New York or wherever, well, I don't know where he's in the Hamptons or somewhere in New York, he's able to go out and buy houses for five million or seven million. That's how they're able to do it. That's how they're able to do it. As soon as they got the money, I would go into the Austrian bank and a numbered account. Nobody would know it. Nobody would know a Mickey Monk about it. Nobody would know nothing about it. Down to one of their bodies in the financial services centre, do the transfer, gone. Give the bloke a couple of bob for himself, 500 or 1000 euros for doing the transfer. Bob's your uncle. Psst, not a word about it. All the money in an account. Nobody can touch it. Nobody knows it's there. That's the world we live in. That's how Shani Fitzpatrick, as I used to think he only had one round in his shotgun. He's got two. He's got the black book with the Austrian accounts and he's got the details of the grey book. And that tells all the share, all the guys who bought the promissory notes, the actual futures, the share futures of him and his buddies. They participated in, there's no doubt from a tax point of view, that would be entirely fraudulent. And I'm sure none of it was declared to the tax authorities. It was just an easy opportunity, a greedy opportunity by greedy parties to make money. And they're all part of it. And the whole deck of cards has got tumbling down, down around us. The only problem is, all that elite debt has now been transferred to Joe Public. And we'll be paying for it for the next, they say we'd be paying for it for the next 18 years. The Anglo Irish debt. Anyway, listen, we talk more. Don't forget the grey market and bank shares.